My name is Mark Hummel. Welcome to Mark Hummel's Harmonica Party. I'm in Croydon right now in the UK, and I'm sitting here with my old buddy Steve West Weston. Hello there. Who uh, I go back with the ways. I think we met, when did we meet? 2012, something like I that? I would think it's something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he's one of my absolute favorite harmonica players in Europe. And uh, I'm just going to ask him some questions. We're going to talk about it, the old days and what things are like now. So um, I know that you, you started on piano, correct? I, yeah, but I, I, I've said in interviews before, but in the 60s, growing up in the 60s in England, a piano was part of the furniture. I guess it was the same in the States. I mean, every... Ev Every, yeah, I mean, I didn't have piano lessons, but there was a piano in every house, right? You know, uh, before the days of sort of television, and it, it was just entertainment. Someone in the family played piano, and yeah. so it, it was one of my toys. And I used to love playing on it. Yeah. Uh, and how uh, old were you? Well, I was. Uh, well, I know. I, I can remember. I learned to play what I say, the bottom line of what I say, with both hands, so little tiny fingers. And I was in junior school, so I was uh, probably around the ages of seven, wow. eight, learning Whoa. to play that stuff. And um, we didn't have a record player at home at that time. It was only sort of radio things, hearing what, and listening to stuff. And, uh, and I saw an older cousin that showed my elder brother how to play what I say, and he showed me. Ah, and we okay. used to muck about. My brother was 13 years older than me, and I'd be going, boom, 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 and he'd just be going, did 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 up the other end. So did you hear it on the radio? My brother, I guess so, I guess so, because we definitely didn't have a record player, I know that, but I kind of knew the, well, I just knew, I'm thinking, I mean, it's a long while ago, of course, and I, I guess I didn't even know what it was. My brother told me it was what I say, and then he mm. played it to me, and I liked it, so I played it, and this was called What I Say. I knew, it, knew what it was called. Yeah. Yeah, probably before I even heard it. Wow. You know? So and I can remember playing at school um, with the windows open in a classroom, and all my pals are dancing in the playground. Oh, that's great. You know, when we were kids. Yeah. Yeah, but that was my first... That's got to be a good feeling when you... Yeah. Oh, I love you know, it. You I really, really love really it. get people into it, it like know. that. Yeah. Um, and, and I was offered piano lessons. My, my, my sister went to piano lessons. Um, she did come very well with it. She's older than me. And she said, do you want to go to piano lessons? And it wasn't cool. And I just thought, no, I don't. I didn't want to hmm. be right. a swatty kid, you know. Right, I right. Wish I had. Yeah, I really wish I had. But, yeah. um, and 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 the, and uh, and that was my introduction to sort of playing the piano. So that was what I did yeah. first of all. Now you were in bands in the sixties, is that right? No, 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 oh, no, okay. not to the seventies. No, 70s. I'm not that old. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Born in fifty nine. You said the sixties. No, the 60s. no okay. six sixties when I grew so up. So you're four was... years four years younger than me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, no, no it was, uh, my first band would have been around about 1977, 78, okay. playing in the Vox Continental organ. Do you remember like the Adam Price one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We found one in a junk shop for uh, 50 pounds, uh, and it was one of the really oldest ones. It, it, it had the black black keys, mm -hmm. uh, different, you know, what, the black keys are white and the white keys are black, and um, it had wooden, wow. wooden keys on this one, covered in yeah. plastic, but the actual keys were wooden. And, what a trip. Uh, and it was all out of tune. You could get them tuned. They had something in it. We took them to a tuner and he tuned it all up. And uh -huh. it was a really shrill little thing. That, and I played <laughs> that for a while. Uh, and I ended up selling that to the guy who played with Elvis Costello. He was, really? Yeah, because they, they wow. used them for videos, you know, just more. Just, huh. you know, I didn't like it. Yeah. yeah. You know, they weren't rare. And, I wish I kept it. They, they weren't so rare and collectible then in right. the 70s. It right. was just old crap. Yeah. So um, so I sold that, but that was my first band. I played that, and they were. And was, what band was that? It was it was a, a Canvey Island band. So I grew up on a, 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 an island called Canvey Island. It's quite well known for music mm -hmm. in in England. Um, but this was a band. It was called the Rubies, and it was a you know sort of school friends and and, and that that we all played in. We were playing sort of Arthur Lee and Love and really kind of sort some of psychedelic, psychedelic stuff, stuff. Right, yeah, right yeah yeah it's uh, kind of my uh, thing now 30 yeah. floor elevators and i had uh, oh, 96 okay, yeah. tears i did right you know, right right, right. Did, 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 did. right. Then, that was my bit you know <laughs> to be heard of. yeah that's funny but it was you know it was um but blues was always my thing mm -hmm. rock and roll and right. blues you know right. so i was a very frustrated in my 20s because 
there was a punk rock movement in right, England right. that was really dominant, and yeah. everybody wanted to play punk rock. Yeah, except me. Right. <laughs> I didn't want to play it, and I couldn't get a band together. Yeah. at all. No, I've heard some horror stories uh, about that time when American bands would come over. Like if they were like country bands yeah. or something like that, they would be just shit out of luck. <laughs> Yeah, no, it was. It was a, I mean, I love the idea. Looking back at it, I think the rebellious idea was great. Right. I mean, it was the mid seventies in England. It was very the progressive rock thing was, you know, Rip Wakeman wearing capes and a well, you know, I heard that a lot of what what that was about was kind of a rebellion against the kind of excessiveness of of rock music at the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the thirty minute guitar solos. Absolutely. You know, and concept albums yeah. and that. Right. And it's not. It's it's maybe okay for your studious university uh, student graduate, but not for your working class kid that works in a factory who's got loads of anger. Right, sure you know? does. And, yeah. and, and, and a lot of hormones going bummy. Right. Right. You, know, you don't want to sit down with a bobble hat on going, wow, no. well, this is cool, you know. Right. And as I said, I grew up on Canvey Island and a band called Dr. Feelgood, I'm sure you must oh, have yeah, heard. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Canvey Island band. Yeah, and, and they oh, were huge. Yeah, they were massive. And they were like kind of a, weren't they almost like a punk rock blues Well, band? they stopped. They started before the punk rock movement, but they certainly uh -huh. inspired it because it went from wearing regular sort of suits and, and shorter hair and songs were three and a half minutes long. They were aggressive. Right. It, was, it was very, very blues based, but it mm -hmm. was stripped to the bone as as Lee the singer often described it, it was really stripped down to the bone. Now, did they have a harmonica player? Well, well Lee used to play the harmonica okay. as a singer, you know. Yeah. Um, and that would, that, that would, I mean, when I saw them, I was 16, I saw them on the television. I went mm -hmm. home and everyone said, oh, Dr. Phil Ryan, you've got to watch them. And I watched them. And I come back to school the next day, I said, this changed my life. Wow. This is fantastic. Huh. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you yeah. see it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, everything I ever wanted in music was was there. I saw them, you know. It was Nine Below Zero kind of like that. They too? they were like that, but they were a few years later. Yeah, they were a few okay. years later. Yeah, yeah, I saw them. They were actually called Stand Blues Band when I first. Called oh, them. really? And I okay. saw them at the gig where they decided to change their name. Interesting. To, they actually said we're going to be called Nine Below Zero. Wow. In a, in a pub in South End, where I lived. Huh. Saw them. But they were kind of punk too. They were not punk, but it, it was a kind of aggressive. English R and B. I mean, they had a fantastic harmonica player, Mark Felton. Mm -hmm. Still got him. He still plays with them, you yeah. know. And he played amplified harp extremely well. And he, look, you've got a fan. He, well, I, yeah, they <laughs> dark trousers. Come on, come. It's a cat. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but it, yeah, yeah, it was a great movement, and it was it was the hip thing to do. Come on, you can come on. It was a, it was a hip thing to do if you was uh, in, in your early twenties in England right. to go and watch bands. Right. You know the, the disco was big. Yeah. But it it really wasn't. Well, maybe you you think you're hip when you think it might be. In the States, it. disco kind of sunk the blues. Yeah. Well, it really yeah, sunk yeah. all live music yeah. basically. Really. Yeah. yeah. In but the seventies. But, but it, I mean, lots of people did go to discos, and lots of my friends went to discos, but mainly to pick up girls. Right. Know? Right. <laughs> Had That's nothing what, to do with music. No, 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 yeah. You, you yeah. Know, I suppose some of them did like it, but but most of my the crowd that I went with, we loved live music, and we were right. going to every gig, every day of the week. There was a live gig. Yeah. In a, in a pub or a club or a bar, we used to come up into London, and I was watching. I saw Muddy in nineteen seventy six. Did you really? Oh wow. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've told this story before, but this is a classic because I've got the album indoors. Um, Rhythm and Blues All Stars, I think it's called. Got a picture, of, a, a sort of silhouette of Sonny Boy Williamson on the front, and it's got various artists on the back, mm -hmm. and it's got Mojo working Muddy Waters. Right. But we both, me and my pal, he, he said, "New Music, New, New Musical Express, the paper." He says, "Muddy Waters is playing in London. Do you want to come see him?" I said, "Oh yeah, I really do." But when we got there, we, we got to get got there. We had no idea what it looked like. So uh, because there's no picture, right? Because we no knew picture, we liked the yeah. song. That's funny. And because then they came on. It was James Portnoy was in the band about right, that later, right, you know, right. in that period in '76. And uh, and I was like, I think it's the Armada Guys. I think it's that. And it's, uh, we, we get, we, couldn't figure out which but one it was. It wasn't two yeah. songs later. And when he walked on, right, like, right, ah, that must be there. He there. is, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I saw him twice, and we went, you know, when I, in the '70s, it was like Albert Collins. We were right. watching him and uh, Albert King. So there were a lot of blues people still they came, coming whenever, over. Whenever they came over and yeah. they played London, we yeah. used to go and see them. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, I actually played in a band playing piano that we supported Albert. 
Oh, uh, Keen. Okay. You, know, you backed him up? Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. Well, don't, don't back him up. We, we you you, you support, opened it. We, we opened the show. Yeah, we okay. Yeah. 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 So, what was the first actual blues band you were in? Blues band would be my own band that I had, and I had a little band with all my pals. Uh -huh. uh, when, when I suppose they got fed up with the punk, it worn out a bit, and they yeah. were the same guys. So I played and were band. you playing piano and harmonica? I was playing or? harmonica to start with. Uh -huh. uh, and then I went on to uh, w when I got the what it was the West West it, was it I'm trying to now I've got to think because I was <laughs> it was called I had a Crawling King Snakes was the first band I had together uh, then I had West Western and West Tones none of these were my names I chose oh, including okay. West Western yeah. I never chose that, that was really a, no it was the bass player uh, when I, I played in the back oh, I said I played that, organ in a band called Eddie and the Hot Rods and I don't think, okay. that, we took I think the you had told me about that yeah, yeah. I, played, I played with them for, yeah. for a, a, a year or two right. and because um, they were Canby boys as well and uh, and they called me West they just called me West and that hmm. was it just the one word West yeah and then when I got the, when I started W-E-S-T yeah West yeah because my okay. second name West they just called me West like, right. were you Wesley no never you was, okay. I never got that it was always never yeah. West it was always West and then my bass player, a long-term friend, he, uh, in in the Crawling King Snakes, he says he should, you should call, we should call you West Western. That's a really cool <laughs> name, and uh, no, I didn't think of it. But then they started calling me it, right? And, and it's stuck. People, people, he's kind of yeah. stuck. I thought, well, right. yeah, that's a name, isn't it? You know. Do. So then I had the Crawling King Snakes, West Western, and the West Tones, and then I had West Western's Blue Sonics, was mm. a, which is still the name used now. Still the name yeah. used today. That would have been yeah. in ninety four. That. So at that point, were you playing both piano and yeah. harmonica? Yeah, in, in the okay. early, early thing. Uh, and the only, um, the, there's two reasons I stopped playing piano. Um, one, there was, there started being some really good piano players and I was really embarrassed by my, by, or I'd get by, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm not a great harmonica player. Um, and also I was carrying a lot of gear. Right, right, <laughs> I, I can understand piano, that, yeah. Piano amp. Harmonica, sure. harmonica, and, and then taking a PA as well, right in the back of a small yeah, that's, car, that's brutal. and then unloading it when you got home at four AM, you know, right, and then parking. And then right, that's yeah. brutal. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was. It was one of the reasons I stopped playing piano. So um, I know you're on a La Lazy Lester record that came yeah. out on on uh, Mike Vernon's label. Was yeah. it was it Blue Horizon? No, it wasn't on Blue Horizon. Was I, I'm not sure what the label is, but he produced the record. I remember that record. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. That's probably the last time I played piano. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what year was that? Two, I don't know, 2000. 2000? 2007. I don't okay. know. I don't know. Yeah. I can't remember. Right. But it was the early 2000s. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that. We were playing So that's Spain. about, that's about when you gave up playing. Yeah, playing. but it was in, it was in Spain yeah. we recorded that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So that was Vernon's studio, evidently. Yeah. Uh, no, it was, um, it was another studio. I, know, I, just, I can't even remember the name of the studio, but it was a local studio because he lives out there. But he was living there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And right. he said, he says, I'm going to get uh, an album together for, for Lazy Lester, a right. live album. Love you to back him. What would you think of Lester? Loved him. He's great. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, had a, we had a good time. You know? yeah. yeah, he's a character. Yeah, 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 yeah. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I'm trying to remember when I heard about you. I want to say... Well, I've been thinking that on the way up, because Frank yeah. says, how did, how, did, how did you mark me? I says, I can't remember. I can't remember. I remember who turned me on to you, though, was uh, Dave Barrett. Really? Yeah. Dave wow. Barrett sent me some videos of you playing. Wow, I've never and that met was, him. Was yeah, to Dave yeah. Barrett was the one that turned me on to you. And he, right. said, he said, now what do you think of this guy? And I that's, listened and went, yeah, he's pretty good. That's the power of the internet, isn't it? Right. You know, right. that's a really good thing about he, it. You know, I mean, he was hip to you kind of before a lot of the other people I knew were. Then another oh, friend of mine, Nick that. Trill, told me about it. Oh, I know too. Nick now. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah well, Nick Trill, it's really funny because he's, he's been over London a few times, but... When you, I know now, but at the mm -hmm. time he says, you don't remember when we met, do you? And I said, no. He said, well, when I played in New York, playing piano, right. in the jump band, we went out to the jump band, not the hot rods, um, we, our guitarist had a Gibson ES175D. Mm -hmm. It was a fat-bodied right. 75 a single figure, 1958, I think it was, beautiful guitar, left it in the back of the yellow cab. Oh, my God. So... Did we, Nick we, kind of come to the rescue? Nick kind of rescued and supplied a guitar. Ah, okay. Um, we actually got it back. We, wow. Uh, uh, 
people, few people phoned people, and they, 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 they luckily enough, they, they, they found the yellow cab in New York. It's millions of them. That's <laughs> amazing. Where are we going to get that? Jeez, back, that's luck, We just got man. out quick, you know. Yeah. And yeah, that's oh, you know, horrible. It's, 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 what a horrible boom. thing to have happen. Yeah, we got it back though. But yeah, yeah. no, that's how we met Nick. Nick, because I don't remember, we, um, right. I got your guitar to play because you didn't wow. have one. Jeez. And, and was it, that was with a swing band? You well, see? it was a band called Rent Party, another local band. We used to do sort of Winani Harris, Lou Jordan. Oh, cool. And, uh, we had, yeah, okay. three piece brass. Yeah. You know. And then did, were you singing in no, front of I, I sung a couple of songs. Yeah. I found a couple of blues. I played, a, I might have gone a couple of songs towards the end of the my mm-hmm. time with that band uh, but it was mainly piano yeah. mm-hmm. and in those days it was upright pianos because digital right. weren't right. this was like 82 to 85 or wow like okay. so there wasn't digital was, it hadn't really come out you know yeah was, yeah, now, favorite. how did you end up getting to the States with a swing band was it because the that swing was, thing that, was that really was a, in that was a really good the band were playing in Edinburgh in Scotland mm-hmm. and is it I think the name is George Wayne Oh yeah, 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 yeah! The famous uh, jazz concert producer. Yeah. He came past and heard the band. He said, "Wow, I want that band on the um, the Cool Jazz Festival." Whoa, the, you know, the, the K Double O L. That's heavy he, duty. He said, and "We went over there. We went over. We played the Lone Star Cafe, the one with Nick yeah, came to. Yeah, yeah. And we played um, the, the Saratoga Jazz Festival." Wow, with Miles Davis. And nice Stetson. break, man. Well, and, and, and there was. Our manager was actually the mum of, of the trumpet player. She said, it's an uproar. She said, Manhattan transfer going mad. They can't get on it. What's this load of people from, we've no one's ever heard of from England doing on the bill, you know? And everyone wow. was really crying because we were unheard of. Right, you know? of we course. Were a little band. You know? Yeah. Little eight, eight-piece band. Little That's eight, amazing. Know? But he, um, and we played that and it's crazy. You know, we had a dressing room rent party and dressing room, Miles Davis. Jeez. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys meet him? No, we didn't meet any of them. Yeah. You know, it, it was, oh, so, uh, some of the guys in the band were really into sort, sort of uh, jazz fusion as well. Because uh-huh. you know, Chick Corea was out there and Michael Brecker. Wow. I mean, yeah. It, they must have uh, been. It's a great story. About they it. must have been just enthralled with that. Yeah, there's, there's a great, yeah. Uh, is, it, is it language prohibited on here? No, no you no, can oh, say oh, whatever well, you want. Well, it's weird really, because we got on the bus to go... Um, uh, 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 out to the festival, it picked us up in, in the hotel, and it, we're going out to, mm-hmm. to this festival. And uh, there's this woman, really close, she comes up to the, the driver. She says, Excuse me, can you tell me where Michael Brecker's sitting? He goes, Lady, who the fuck is Michael Brecker? Who said that? The bus driver? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> of course, the whole bus was in hysterics. Oh, I bet. Because you know, yeah. she was really, yeah, I'm Michael Brecker. And she goes, I'm going to let you sit. And he goes, the lady, who the fuck is Michael Brecker? <laughs> that blew her day. <laughs> huh? blew, and it just made yeah. the whole bus. Yeah, just, that's just, great. Full yeah. of that laughter. That's funny. So, um, yeah, the first time I saw you, you were playing a clip, and I think you were doing some George Smith, as I recall. Yeah, that probably would have been Telephone Blues, which telephone would be, would blues, been in my, yeah. isn't in my repertoire at the moment right. anymore, but I right. can pull it out at any time. But yeah, I used to do that, you know. And yeah. I mean, but that was, you know, it, it was an album, I think it was on Red Lightning, and I heard that, you know, and I thought, wow, what a sound that is. Yeah. And working out, that's not second position harmonic. Right, you third know. position, yeah. yeah. The first yeah. time we're hearing it, it because yeah. it's before... Everything was available, right? Like tongue blocking and everything right. that, that everybody knows. As soon as yeah. you pick one, you can Google it in, right? So that's all I need to know. Oh, my days, it was a record, a harmonica, and that was it. So, did you have how did you find out about tongue blocking? I was told by a guy, um, tongue blocking is putting your tongue on the harmonica to get a single note, yeah. Um, an essential to, for what I, right. you and I do to get that particular style, yeah. in my view anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a guy, Paul Rowan, a band called Little Matthew and the Intentions, I think they go, and he, play, he was playing, an English guy, and I just, he came and I saw him in the bar, I said, God, you've got a great way of playing, the sounds are going great, he goes, like, so he says, I think it's all down to tongue blocking, hmm. because remember my pal, Dexter Shaw, Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, right, Frank is dead, yeah. I said, that little bit of paper that used to come, which should diagram, right, that, he goes, yeah, exactly that, I said, all the guys in the States do it, wow, 
right, fancy a yoga. And, and ended up, it was Rick Estrin that told him. Right. And another right. friend of mine, Lloyd yeah. Garman, he told them both at the same right. time, you've got to be tongue blocking if you right. want to get it, guys. And they were the, the guys that had it in England. Yeah. And I sort of, I've, I've second Yeah, hand. Rick was kind of one of the main guys to yeah. kind of get the word out. Yeah, and so second time from, from Rick, it came on yeah. to me. And then we both went away because Dex played a little bit hard as well. And uh, he, next time he says, yeah, go, that was it. It's really hard because yeah. I've been playing. and tongue blocking yeah. and bending. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've yeah. been playing lip person for so many years. Right. And all of a sudden, um, it was a whole new, everything shifted over a bit. You're playing right. the go. Right. Right. It's, it's, tol- it's like but relearning. I, it's like I was, relearning. I was stubborn. And yeah. I just thought, I'm going to have to figure out this. And uh, I just stayed away until I got it. Yeah. And That's kind of what yeah. you had to do. Yeah, you had to do that. And I yeah. wanted to do it. You know, yeah, you had to just it make yourself play the world. That way. It changed the world, especially with, as I say, with, with tongue blocking and bending. Right. That, that I, I can't, you know, right. I don't have to, in my view, there's no capacity. It seemed like in England there weren't very many people doing that either. No. Wonder, wonder, Almost nobody. Well, yeah. there's, nobody, there's nobody there to tell you. Right. On the internet, say, so we'll tell you now, but when, there's, when you're getting it from other players, right. or just, as like everybody did in England, you bought a record, you bought a harmonica, and, uh, you, you try, try to learn try from try that. that. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, my first time Monica was a chromatic that my dad bought me and I was 15 mm-hmm. and I had a blues record that he also bought me um, and uh, I, I'm listening to this and trying to get a chromatic to do this. <laughs> right. and, and the reason that he said, he called them two-tone, he goes, you want, you want a two-tone one? I says, well, I think so because it's got kind of blues notes. And I thought the bending notes would be right. the button. The a bit like button. a trumpet player. Yeah, right, 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 right. You know, you go, right. Da, 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 and I just yeah. had a feeling it was right. that button. Which, which you, you can do. You yeah, can but, you, do would, that. but, you, but yeah. you can see how you think that. It's a totally you? different yeah. sound. Of course, yeah, it's this yeah. not true at all. So yeah. loads of Vaseline on my lips, where I was ripping my lips to bits, trying to do this stuff. Right. Because there's no instructions and anything. Right. So I spent a good while getting it wrong on that. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and I just... And were these LPs you were learning? Yeah, we're talking LPs. Yeah. That, that, right. You know, that... Scratching them to bits. Scratching them to bits, yeah. you know, going the same bit and the same bit. And, and, it, and it wasn't actually until I, I went in the shop in, in, again in South End and in the in the Hona display cabinet, there was one and it said Blues Harp written on it. Right. Because we didn't have marine bands in those days. They were always called Super Vampers. Right. Echo Super Vampers. And uh, same, what, different cover plant. Right. Uh, uh, but this one had Blues Harp written on it and, and I, I thought, I've seen Blues Harp written on the back of a Dr. Feelgood album. It's someone, it, it said Lee Brillo vocal and harp. So I know that must be a harmonica. Yeah. You know, it's French harp, I know now. Right. But yeah. So, right. so uh, and I bought it, and of course, it, it fell into place straight yeah. away. Straight away. Oh, God, this is like one. Right. Sadly, it was one in B. <laughs> That's what <laughs> my first harp was in B. Yeah, they like they tried to get rid of the shot, they put it on the display. Cause I mean, the worst part is I learned everything on a B harp, even though there were A harmonicas yeah. on the record. Yeah, it was a B harp, and I yeah, had that. Yeah, somehow I learned it everything like that. Yeah. It all, everything fell into place. That's crazy. Uh, and so that's, that's that's my introduction to playing that and, and the tongue blocking. And of course, as I hear George Smith, um, going back to George Smith doing Telephone Blues and that, and I realised that this sounds like someone that's tongue blocking to me. Right. And uh, and I learned, uh, I spent a lot of time with another one, Dexter Shaw's records, which he lent me, was uh, Tributes to Little Walter, George Smith. Right, right. Yeah, which that. is a great record. It's a great record. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't got it. And I, yeah. uh, and I don't think Dexter's got it anymore. I think he said it yeah. went somewhere. But, yeah. but I, I had that at home. I just went through that and thinking, because it's, it's a, a derogatory, derogatory thing to say, but it's quite simple lines he's playing mm-hmm. on it. I thought, this is a good one to learn yeah. off of. Where yeah, well, he plays it his own way. That's yeah. what's interesting yeah. about it. Yeah, he really... and you could clearly hear the riff. Yes. Whereas with Walter, it's buried in this 50s mix, and right. you think you've got the riff, but right. you haven't got anywhere near no, it. You know, no, no. It's, you listen. That's something you relearn and relearn yeah, and think, relearn. Yeah. I was doing there. Yeah. You know, but with, with the George stuff, I could actually hear what he was yeah. doing quite yeah. clearly. Yeah, and uh, I looked at that, and and I've gone, and I thought, oh, when he gets to hole one, what do I do? Oh, so obviously you must put your tongue on the other way. So right, I, I do that now. Just I, lip, yeah. No, I don't. Oh, do you it. do the yeah, tongue so, switch, yeah, right? Tongue switch. switch. But yeah. so it, it must be. I would right. not tongue blocking. Right. How can it possibly be? Right. But there's a 
later my friends say we off they often just go on the pub yeah that's yeah. all you have to do yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, well, I, so i've got these techniques so, so yeah. i can play around one to one and two and three and it's just in my mouth and my tongue's going like this and you play right. don't, don't do any movement here right you know but right. once your brain's got that logged in it, it's not an effort yeah it's quite a good way so now when did you first like start playing amplified um, always wanted as soon as I heard Joel Smith I wanted to play Amplified yeah I mean I did um, uh, I had a little thing my first amp was a 1978 Silver Face Champ mm -hmm. and I remember reading in the NME again about good amplifiers for harmonica as a mm -hmm. Fender Champ right and because, because bands in the 70s in England were really loud I bet they were yeah. drums were loud everything was yeah. loud yeah. Marshall amps right Fender Champ is no, <laughs> no way. <laughs> no you way. Know, so yeah. that, I had that, and uh, it wasn't the right amp. But, um, and then I think the next amp I bought was a basement, but a basement piggyback. I uh -huh. found that in London. Oh, yeah, 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 with uh, the, the head, yeah, head, the head on top. Yeah. It, 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 like it, a 60s, yeah. It was a, yeah, it would, have, it would have been a brown Tolex or a beige Tolex. One mm -hmm. It was covered in black. But it, right. would, it was that model. I think it was a brown faceplate on it, if I remember yeah. right. And uh, I had that for a... It had the wrong valves in it. Bought it. it the Did it valve. have four tens? No, it had two twelve. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. two twelves close back. Right, yeah. right. So it's a, I know. think I might have had one of those. Yeah, and uh, I used that for a while, but it had the wrong valves in it. it had, uh, you know, getting technical, but it had EL thirty fours in it. I think instead of six oh sixes. Right. Uh, so it never really sounded right, but I used it for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I was just in Holland on tour, and a guy just came and says, "I want to buy that amp off you," and he was. Um, uh, an Eddie Cochran fan and he hmm. played for guitar and apparently he played through them right. and he offered me loads of money for it and he comes to try his guitar and he immediately came in and took the valves out put the right ones in and played his guitar it sounded incredible wow <laughs> but I'd already done the deal with him by then so uh, yeah. yeah so that, that and I wish I'd kept has gone right that's gone right so it sounded great when he did that oh yeah yeah then I bought another Silver Face 50 head I think I used for a while um uh, and then the basement reissue came out in the nineties, right? And, uh, and and Paul Lamb got me a deal on that. Did he? Like, yeah, he got me a deal on one of those, so yeah. I could afford, you know. Do you part. know Paul pretty well? I've yeah, in the past. We, we, yeah, we, he was he yeah. was kind of one of the early guys. Yeah, he's known one of the early guys yeah. that, that we all you know wanted looked up to. He, I mean, he's a phenomenal player. Yeah, yeah, Absolutely plays phenomenal. really badass. Sonny Terry, Big Walter. Yeah. Stuff like that. I mean, the, the, the thing with Paul is <clears> I've been in the same room with him where, you know, we're trying out amps and at home and stuff, and he mm -hmm. goes, and he plays a little bit, and then, have a ghostly, okay. Half the volume. Half really? The, oh, God, he's massive. Really? He's wow. really got a lot of stuff. Now, does that. he tongue block a lot of stuff? I think so. I don't, yeah. I'm not sure anyone's spoken yeah. to him about it. But, uh, I actually called him to show me Sonny Terry yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I mean, he helped me with that. Yeah, yeah, he's he's yeah. but he's he's um he's a phenomenal player. Yeah, you know, yeah, he is. He is a phenomenal player. Absolutely, I think you are two of the top names in blues harmonica in, in the UK. Well, I, I I don't put myself up there on on there because I know so many players that are so right so good. You know, yeah. but but it's that's. I don't like competition in music. I, really I don't either. It. I hate it. You know, I hate, I hate, I hate it. And I hate you. Yeah. I hate when you wall sound these things. When I look at, it, I think, you know, if there, it's an art, yeah. music is an art. Yeah. And if you say you in artist, you can say, right, like, this this year, Picasso is is number one, and Salvador Dali is number two. Right. You know, how yeah. could you compare the two? I know. Yeah. They're it's both like, It's such apples and oranges it, that it but makes yeah, it, no it's, sense. It's art. And, yeah. and, and the thing yeah. of. Uh, it, Record sales is the thing you can judge. You can have number one in the yeah. most popular record sales. Right. That makes right. sense. Right. But to say somebody's a better harmonica player than somebody else, well, you technically better. You're faster. Right. Exactly. Uh, how does that? How does that? that how does that uh, yeah. really? You know. Yeah. Compute. Yeah. yeah. And and and, yeah. and and early on when I was playing and we, and and Dexter Shaw again he was he was playing he was playing guitar with me. Wow, this is way back in the, in the early 90s and, mm -hmm. and we were at a festival and he said, Steve, there's a harmonica competition, you should go in for it. So I got the form here and I looked at it and they actually put what they were looking for and it was sort of like high register runs and, and it was at all this speed and, it, and I said, I said, you know what? I said, if Sonny Boy 
waiting for this, you wouldn't stand a chance. Right. It well, it's kind of like the voice tick. or something, you know. One of these boxes. Yeah, it's like, it's like the voice, you know, in the 60s, that. nobody would have yeah. made it onto the voice. No. You know what I'm saying? No. Yeah, no. it just wouldn't have happened. No. Um, yeah. so, they, so, they, don't uh, look, they don't look like models. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the thing for me in blues music is the music, the song, you know, the great mm. song. Yeah, that, that make it work. It's a, the rhythm's really cool and right. it's really got a special thing going on. Especially right. something that's classic, just yeah. recording. It's got something really special going on. Yeah, and the heart playing is fantastic, and it's three minutes of wonderfulness. Yeah, you know, and that is what's lacking now. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think I agree. And, I, man. and I, I, I really believe if you say it's all been done, there's nothing left. That, that's no, that's BS. That's BS. That's, that's, that's rubbish. You know, yeah, there's still is. plenty there.